Lastly, I want to say to Jen that you may not want to lie about me and the truth of what I'm saying, because I do have receipts. What's to come on today's video? She talks about you all of the time, Angle T. You are, it's my ex and you. The topic of conversation was like sending them like um, free makeup and, you know, all these things and just so that they can all come against Mango T. It's your husband she hates. It's, I mean, I don't even want to repeat the stuff she says against him because of his sexuality. And then she tries to pretend like she just loves gay guys and my gay friend here and, you know, try to pretend like so she can just have that support from that community and the beauty community. That's all it is, but it's not really who she is in, in real life. And then she talks about for a rant for like five whole minutes about how ugly Karina Kaboom is and have you seen her teeth and she looks like a witch and blah, blah, her skin is so horrible. Said something about her being a man. So I know for a fact that Jennifer said, I am a white female and people will believe me. I can prove she said that, she can't lie. Wow. I am Jennifer's worst nightmare. For her to do this to me, she gave me $600 cash one day and said, Go put a tracker on your ex's car. And when I got here, I had to like clean it up. There were bugs everywhere. She had rats everywhere that were literally dead in the house when I got here. I would love to be able to support your brand if you have colors that are for women of color. And she literally told me I would never do that. Hey guys, and welcome to Mango Tea. Mango Tea. Made in China, bitch. So today I'm gonna be interviewing a Jen Gerard and Gerard Cosmetics insider that wrote to me because she wants to come forward with her story of what she's currently going through with Jen Gerard and Gerard Cosmetics. She wants to spill the tea about several different things that I don't know about yet that she's going to be telling us exclusively on Mango Tea. She also wants to discuss the harassment campaign that Jen has initiated against me about her homophobia, racism. There's a lot that we're going to be covering in this interview today. So without further ado, let's get right on into today's video. How do you know Jen Gerard or what's your affiliation to Gerard Cosmetics? Kind of give us a little bit of background there. I know Jen through my ex-husband, oddly enough. She was dating my ex okay. and um, we were having a custody battle. Okay. And I'm just going to leave it at that. And um, Jennifer used her money, even though my ex did tell her that, you know, I was a good mom. She did use her money to get him a lawyer and encouraged him to say all kinds of horrible things about me. And to the point where I was literally, I had to, you know, eventually get my own, own um, lawyer, which she also paid for. I'll get to that because, you know, they were trying to literally throw me in jail um, and keep my kids from me. And she was going to try to have the kids. She signed up to have the kids come live with her in her house with my ex. So that was the whole point. Um, it was extremely hurtful because they did have my kids. And they said all sorts of things to keep my kids away from me, all sorts of lies. And my ex literally told her, and she confirmed this, she's like, I don't want to get Tisha in trouble. He literally said that. And she confirmed that. And um, Jen's thing was just, you know, this is war, basically. So none of that matters right now. You just need to get the kids. You know, and whatever you have to say or do to her, I'm here to spend the money to get that done. He, he in this situation, was the one with the heart. Okay? So she basically has all the power in her hands because she, you know, is the CEO of this cosmetics company. She has a lot of money, whether it's from the sales of her cosmetics or wherever she has, like, her wealth from. So basically what yeah. you're saying is because of her relationship with your ex... She mm -hmm. decided to say, hey, let's take Tisha out of the picture. Let's get custody of the kids so we can have like our life, our thing. Like, let's throw her under the yes. under the bus. Now, why you know, have mm -hmm. you met her at this time or anything like that? Or is no. the only thing that basically is whatever they had kind of going on behind the scenes, like scheming against you, essentially, is what was going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. And, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, people know my ex was her employee. And of course, she's the owner. <clears throat> so there's that whole dynamic going on there as well between the two of them. So was that going on between the two of them? Mm -hmm. And so eventually, I guess their whole thing dissolved, Steve, Mango T. <laughs> their whole thing dissolved, right? right. <laughs> Jen gets mad at my ex 
because this is the story that I heard. <clears throat> this is what's going on because they have like a huge lawsuit going on right now. So I, I guess I don't know what's going on over there, but I can't really talk about it. Sure. But um, what happened was my ex decided he didn't want to be with, with her in a way that was romantic. Now, I, I don't know if he provided for you. I don't know how you got all your information. But what he did show me at one point was a stream of messages between Jen and him <clears throat> of her wanting to be with him and him saying, you know, I'm not interested in you in that way. And when she realized that I'm giving you all this money, she um, paid for him to live in an apartment in a nice part of town that he could never afford, had him driving like Bentleys and Mercedes Benzes and I had never seen him driving on like BMWs. I'm like, you know, I almost had for him. I thought, you know, maybe he's coming up. But <laughs> or he's a sugar baby. <laughs> he was absolutely a sugar baby. Man. No, he was a sugar baby. I have never seen this man come up like this. But when he decided he didn't want to be with her anymore, this is what I know. She took his position away because he was an executive. And she threw him in a warehouse with all of her other rejects. That's where all her rejects go. She's just like a warehouse full of rejects. And <laughs> made it extremely difficult for him at work. Took all of his perks away. You know, she would say, oh, you can have all. This is what we know based on what he showed us when he and I were still talking on talking terms. <clears throat> and so um, it cost him his job. And that's when Jen came calling me. Like, hey, I know you're going through the situation and put it all on my ex and saying it was him, it was him, it was him. I didn't know any of this. And he was kind of like using me and whatever else. And I'm going to help you and your children. This is what she told me. But it started first was at, at this point in the story, was she already working with him to get the kids taken away from you? So did that all start? All, did that already happen? And then now she's on your side now after things yes. kind of went south. So things went Absolutely. south, she decided to say, hey, you know, allegedly he was demoted because of their romantic relationship going south and he didn't want like, you know, to be with Jen allegedly or whatever. So then like you're saying about fired from his job, but then after that happened, now she's going to you to go against him when she was initially trying to fight you. Oh my God. And Mango, it's not even, it, it doesn't even go that smoothly. She accuses him of being this horrible person at work. Like, I wasn't there, so I don't know if that was it or not. But she knew that there was domestic violence issues between myself and my ex at one point. So when she decided she had no use for him anymore because he didn't want to be with her romantically, Jennifer Gerard uses what she knows about his temper and pokes the bear every chance she got just kept poking at him, poking at him, poking at him, and got other people to join in with her. Now that I know for sure. And she told me, this is coming from Jen, and Jen can't deny this because she knows all of my conversations are recorded. I've told her that several times. And I also, when I tell her, she continues to call, talk. So Jennifer knows, I'm not, I'm not recording her without her knowledge. And Jenny, Jennifer knows this. So I already know how Jennifer is. After this, she's going to, oh, they're all lying on me. Everybody's not lying on Jennifer. So I know for a fact that Jennifer said, I am a white female and people will believe me. That's what she said. Do you think all these people in Valencia, the radio station, the, um, the judges, mm -hmm. and also the policemen are going to believe him over me? I'm a white female who has money. I can prove she said that. She can't lie. Wow. I am Jennifer's worst nightmare. For her to do this to me, I have no idea why she would do this. But I do, I have. A, I, I think I have a theory on why that is. But here's, let's get back to the point. Yeah. She made it seem as though Sean had this huge attitude and that he was going to harm people at her job. And so she called like the police and had him removed and then got a restraining order on him. Now, that's how she got him fired. But you know what? My ex does have a temper. At that time, I wasn't there, so I don't know if he blew up at, on the staff or not. But I do know that she was literally trying to get me and other people around her to continue to say negative things about my ex to get him thrown underneath to jail. Mm. Could, did, did she need a restraining order? Probably, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he was saying certain things because she knew that she can poke him and have a reaction. She knew that. 
And so when she got that reaction, after she continually poked at him, I didn't play these games with my ex because I know not to, but she did. And it cost him his job and his freedom, you know, and she continues to try mango to get myself like every single month. She'll come to me like, you need to go to the court and you need to tell them that your ex did X, Y, and Z to um, violate the order for child support or the order for um, spouse support. And if you if he violates that order, then he has to go to jail. So you need to go do this and you need to go do that. I refuse to do that. I said, I'm not doing that. So we need to kind of go back in the story and I'm, and I'm, running, I'm running away with it. I'm just going to let you keep asking the questions because yeah. it's just it's so much well right from where we just kind of left off in the story was <clears throat> your ex doing anything in terms of violating any of these different things whether it was like um the spousal support or with the child support or any of that sort of stuff was he violating any sort of thing was he or was Jen trying to get you to say that in order to basically have a claim against him to try to put him in jail? Was Jen basically trying to scheme with you on something that wasn't true for you to go to jail? Absolutely. Court? So yeah, so he wasn't Absolutely. doing anything at that point. He was, she was just trying to cuddy, cuddle up to you and be like, hey, Tisha, I think this is what we can do. Let's get him in jail. Cause she's almost was vindictive to do it. And again, I don't know your ex. We've just met for the first time on Skype. But what I'm trying to say is, from my experiences with Jen, I've seen how, and we'll talk about this, how she kind of gets people, she picks a target and then she gets people to like come for that person. Absolutely. And so let me tell you with my ex, he has his demons and he, and he needs to work on those himself. But what you don't do with Jennifer Gerard is tell her no. And that my, my goodness, till this day, it is her mission. She will have her, business go to hell and a handbasket and have no money left trying to you know use this vindictiveness that she has against him it's vicious it is crazy and it's not right and there are people that she personally knows who will try to come to you privately because they've done that to me and say listen we know that your ex has this issue but what she's doing in order to manipulate him and everyone around him who knows him to get him thrown in jail underneath the jail is not right. And even the woman who was a victim at one point of uh, domestic violence at the hands of him at one point, listen to me, if he got himself together, I don't know what's going on with him. If, you know, he's trying, he's not, he uh, hasn't done that to me in years. You know what I mean? I'm trying to move forward in a way that's positive for me, my kids, you know, and, and the ch father of my children. That's between he and I. It has nothing to do with Jennifer. And so <clears throat> here's what I know. My ex had friends. Jennifer Gerard befriended all of them when they broke up from his best friend, who will remain nameless, and his wife that my ex has known for five years easy. They were his closest friends. She um, now pays for uh, his best friend's uh, wife uh, through college. She's paying her way through college. She uh, is supporting my ex's best friend's business and have completely turned them from Sean. Now, if anybody needs somebody at the point where my ex is, he definitely needed his best friend, you know, but Jennifer took it upon herself okay. to befriend them and dish out all the money she could to try to cajole people to say things negative against him. Also, my ex was actually dating a girl at the time when Jennifer came to the picture. Jennifer came in paying both of them money I thought that my ex's ex girl, my ex's girlfriend worked for Jennifer, but she just didn't. Wow. Eventually, you know, my ex and his girlfriend um, lived together. And, you know, after everything went down and my ex and Jennifer broke up, Jennifer contacted his ex, said whatever she had to say, and moved his ex into her mansion for free. So she's using okay. her, her status of sort of her money and she's using you know her other homes and other things in order to 
get Jen Gerard's way. She's using different people, she's fluffing them up with cash, education, all these sort of things in order to make sure people are almost, it's almost like a cult in the way they get so invested or they have so much to lose if they go out against her, right? Absolutely. So she moves her into his ex-girlfriend into his home. His ex-girlfriend of probably like a year or two or so, they live together under the same roof. And moves her into her mansion with her. It's not a separate house. They live together and try to pressure this girl into saying that my ex she tried to have the girl say, and she pressured her all in the, a lot. So when the when his ex decided, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. All because Jennifer has my ex bought a lawsuit on her after she fired him. Mm. And so when, she, when he filed that lawsuit saying, you know, sexual harassment, she fired me on these pretenses because I didn't want to be with her. She felt like, okay, my business is in jeopardy, but then also she also had this vindictiveness against him. So let me get his girlfriend in here. And if she says, Jennifer also claims he went to Europe around the same time. So you're not going to get together and accuse this man of rape. And he'll probably never see the light of day. And she just wasn't going for it. Yeah. So about a year passed of this girl living with her and Jen trying to get her to stay. Uh, and Jen got tired of it. Okay, well, she's not going to do it. So guess what? Now I'm going to accuse his girlfriend of stealing tens of thousands of dollars worth of my belongings. And since you stole my stuff, now you have to go. He kicked her out. Within 30 days, she was off on the street trying to find a place to live. She's off on her own at that point. Off on her own. Wow. No, she didn't want to comply with Jen's demand of claiming this in order to Absolutely. feed her own driven case and things against your ex precisely to try to discredit his character and his claims so that i guess his lawsuit will be thrown out of court and her business won't be affected and she would get all this vindictiveness you know and feeling good about him being in the worst place of his life like she feeds off of that stuff fast forward till now mm-hmm. okay i'm minding my own business him me hum in my home in Lancaster with my children. Yep. And she knows that I'm a single, mo- single mother of three um, and I'm divorcing a mother of three. So it's not easy financially for a single mother of three, you know? So she's like, well, I have a deal for you. She calls me, I'm not calling her. Yep. And she says, I have a home in Santa Clarita. Great schools, it's a house. You don't have to pay any costs to move in, but you have to pay 2000 a month. I'm like, okay, well, that's great. You know, that's, that's, that's easy in Santa Clarita. I mean, I couldn't find a place in Santa Clarita for that much. Yeah. I said, but you know, I'm on disability right now, so I'm not going to be able to pay $2,000 all at once. And she says, oh, don't Matt, don't worry about that. You can pay it, just pay it by the 15th of the month, but just make sure you get it in. Mm-hmm. And those were the terms. I want you to sign this. You have to sign this just for technicality, but I know the owner of the leasing company, so, um, you don't have to worry about that. It doesn't have to be due by the, th- by the third, like it says in the contract. So I have history of paying on the first and the 15th or on the first and by the end of the month. She's all, I paid her $20,000 so far wow. and my lease is not even up. Okay. So, so it for like she, a certain time period for like one year on this lease or what did, it, what did it look like in that document? Did, was it very ironclad, even though she's like, Oh, don't worry about, you know, yes. stuff. Yes. It was yes, but mind time. you by now, though, mind you by now, it's been about a year, she and I, okay? Um, her trying to kind of soften me up and pretend to be my friend, and she's giving me money. Like, this woman, and, and she better not come and lie, she gave me $600 cash one day and said, go put a tracker on your ex's car so we'll know where he is. Absolutely. And if I were to go down for that, it's not like she would have said, oh, you know, you know, she would act like she had nothing to do with it because she gave me cash. Of course, I didn't go put a tracker on my ex's car. I said, well, thank you for the $600. And and I made sure that my kids, you know, (laughs) and she would give me, she would hand me wads of cash every single time I saw for a span of a whole year. This is what I'm just trying to understand. She's claiming, and again, as my own personal disclaimer, I do not know your ex. 
I have not spoken on the phone to your ex or anything like that. I got sent his complaint about the sexual harassment and all that sort of stuff. I made my video and that sort of thing. So I'm making that clear because I know Jen's going to be watching and going to... I'm not in any sort of conspiracy with your ex, with you. I'm just talking to you to try to find out the missing puzzle pieces because as you know, so much people gave me crap in the beginning about this and throughout and we're going to talk about her harassment campaign against mango tea and all that sort of stuff too but really though she's alleging that your ex has been like stalking her wants to kill her that there's all this like she's basically in fear for her life and i'm just trying to understand because from what i saw on court filings and stuff nothing's been done for like two years yeah um, the, it's been dead for two years. It's, been, it's dead. been dead for two years. Now, she allegedly moved from her home because she's saying that she had to move for her safety. Another insider type person told me, oh, it's because of the sales of her company. I heard she's doing very well overseas. So I'm just trying to understand, like, she's saying, like, oh, he's, you know, placing my life in danger, but yet she's trying to pay you to go put a tracker on his car. And she's, like, so obsessed, in my opinion, with him that she's willing to go through all these extreme measures, but there's been no court stuff going on in two years. Why doesn't she just put him in jail if he was really... I'm just trying to understand that whole aspect of it. Well, I don't know why. You know, Jen is just obsessed with my ex. Yeah. Point blank, period. And we're just... I'm finding out pawns in her scheme to get back at him and to get him thrown in jail and to get that harassment case off of her company. This woman is vicious. You know, she is vicious. I, I'm not getting anything out of this, um, Mango. I'm not extorting her. I'm not saying if this, then that. If you don't do this, then that. I paid my money. I gave you $20,000 to live here. You know, like, I'm not asking her for anything. I'm simply wanting people to know that this woman is vicious, and I wouldn't pay a one red cent for a subpar um, products that she has so that she can continue to do this to people. What you know? Did, okay, so like, tell us what basically happened with this place that you have. So you've been playing. You paid up to twenty thousand dollars. You're paying the rent. It's coming out of yeah. your checking account. Is it automatically, yes. or are you writing like a paper check? Like, no, I pay online. You pay online. to the leasing company. To the yes. leasing company, right? So the leasing company yes. is getting paid. So how are we in this position that we're in today, where she's basically trying to evict you? I'm, mean, I, I from what I you know, I've been hearing is that she's so big with, you know, helping people with, you know, domestic abuse and violence and all that. And that's wonderful. You know, I've heard she's done things with Santa Clarita and she's helping people. Here you are in this position where you're a single mom with kids. You have a domestic a violence survivor. Exactly. And she's now trying to evict you merciless, like you're, yeah. you're out. So how did this, how did we get to this place that Jen Gerard is willing to just kick you out of your place? You know, you've had financial issues and difficulties. You're, you, you've been in this place where Jen Gerard offered a helping hand to you. How does it get to the place now where she's initially wanting you to work on her behalf of like putting the tracker on the car, make up these claims yeah. against your ex, do all these different things because she has these, like she's like you said, very vindictive. She has this vendetta against him. She has to do anything in her power. Why is she trying to evict you at this point? Why is she going to court now? Like, what is going on? Yeah, you know, I have a court date next week. Um, things were going fine for the first three, four months while she was pressuring me to do this and that for her and realized I wasn't going to do it. And then I get a call from the leasing company saying, well, the owner tells us that she wants you to start paying all of your rent by the third. Now, this is in writing. Yeah. And I wrote back to them and I said, listen, this is not the agreement that Jen and I had um, in the beginning. She advised me that I can pay within the month as long as it's paid. It's it, but I've been paying you consistently the first and in the middle of the month because that's how I was getting paid at work. Yeah. I get paid every two weeks. And so Jen knew this. In fact, when I first moved into the house, I was on disability, so I wasn't working at all. I was just paying uh, by, based on my savings. Yeah. And so there's no way that she, she didn't do a background, she didn't make sure I qualified for the house, all these things that you have to do as, as an owner if you were in fact trying to be a stickler to make sure you're gonna get paid. Jen knew my situation. The people here before me who lived here before me lived here for like three years for free. Somebody else that she was probably paying off and you know, decided she didn't have use for her. I don't know if she evicted them or not, I have no idea, but these were people who were supposed to be her friends. And so I didn't 
ask to live here for free. You know, I didn't ask her for any handouts. I'm giving you my money for this little trash house that you gave me. Like when I, when I, you know, when I, when I got here, I had to like clean it up. There were bugs everywhere. She had rats everywhere that were literally dead in the house when I got here. There's, you know, the doors don't fit, don't work. The, this is a safety hazard. I'm paying my money in 2000 a month. Isn't she? No. To live in your, in your rat infested, bug infested house that you don't want to take care of. And yet I'm still paying my money. So then three to four months within the lease, she decides since I'm not going to do all these things that she wants me to do to get my ex in trouble because I just won't do that. You know, then she says, uh, the leasing company contacts me. You have to have your rent paid by the third. And I'm like, well, that's not what the agreement was. So in June last month, Mm -hmm. I'm paying my rent like I always do. And I guess by the 10th or 11th, I get a knock at the door. And it's somebody serving me saying that I'm going to be evicted in that, that I need to answer this within X amount of time or, you, you know, you're going to be kicked out of your house. So that's where we are right now. I called her, tried to pay her, her money in June. Mm-hmm. And she says, well, it's too late. You can't pay me now. That's what she says. It's, it's too late. You can't pay me now because um, it's past the third and we've already served you. So that's it. And it's like, if you have any you know, questions, ask the leasing company, who she already said, don't talk about it. She just sent me there anyway. And then the leasing company says, call the lawyer. The lawyer still hasn't called me back. You know, and I told Jen, I'm like, what's going on here? Yeah. You know, what's happening? Like, she won't talk to me. She got really nasty and really rude with me. And, you know, anything happening in your house is an emergency, even though the electricity shocked my son and it doesn't work. Um, the knobs on the door don't work. So there's no security in the back. My water comes out brown upstairs, like literally brown. I'm supposed to bathe in this. Like, you know, she's not doing anything she's supposed to do as a landlord, but I'm still giving her money and she treats me this way. And so now she's going to, when you spoke to Jen, well, 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 this whole thing broke with Jen. She went on social media. Oh, you know, I am an advocate for domestic violence and I have a scholarship for women who are domestic violence victims. And if you all want to apply for the scholarship, just go ahead and call me, call such and such and such or reach out to such and such and such. You know, so she works with the domestic violence shelter in Santa Clarita. Yeah. And I reached out to her and said, hey, Jen, I want to apply for this scholarship that you talked about. Oh, I'm not really doing that. I'm not really doing that. I just, I just put that on there. So she's using it in a way to have this, I, in my opinion, kind of like this public image in a way. And then when someone's asking for help, she's not providing the help. You're paying, at least with your place, 2000 a month. It's her, you know, her place. She's taking $2,000 a month from you. Like you said, the living yeah. conditions aren't sanitary when you have brown water you're bathing in and rats. And- the leasing company said they wanted nothing to do with her. They're like, I want nothing to do with this. I want nothing to do with this because they knew it was gross and nasty. She's like, we don't even operate like this. That's what they told me. They don't want anything to do with it. It's just, it's so funny to me how, you know, first she's working against you with your ex, then she's on your side, but when you're not willing to go up against your ex and claim certain things that aren't true, now she's willing to find that little loophole, that little clause, just like how you signed that agreement. Oh, actually now you have to pay by the third or whatever. So she has that technicality in order to try to screw you over when she initially said that everything is supposed to be fine. You know, everything's okay. It just shows me this was supposed that to be this was that her. Trusted. Yeah, and it shows me that this was her point in the from the beginning. Like she knew she was going to do this, so she had that clause in place already with the with the lease with the lease. You know, that she could fall back on should things not work out how she wanted it to with me. Right. So when it comes to doing all these things. So she has a legal technicality to pull out if she ever needed to against you and that sort of stuff. And I feel like, you know, she's willing to go to court for whether, you know, for my video, she's willing to try to serve me, she serve you, like all these different things. Like she always just is, in my opinion, just so vengeful. Like she just needs revenge and she needs to come for people. Like the second something goes down, she's willing to turn on people and, you know, there's so she much talks about you all the time. She talks about you all of the time, Angle T. You are, it's my ex and you. The topic of the conversation, like whenever you speak, I speak to her on a weekly basis. If we're not talking to each other on the phone, then we're texting, right? Yeah. So she just wants you to be quiet. Like if you don't like something she says, or if you don't like her product or whatever, it's like with Karina Kaboom. She talks about Karina Kaboom all the time. 
Yeah, and she, she literally... Kareem she told was, what, me. three years ago, four years ago, that whole scandal went down. And then people are like, oh, you know, Mango T, you mentioned it. I'm like, when I was on the phone with her, she made it a point to bring she up mentions, Karina. She mentions it. And then she talks about, for a rant, for like five whole minutes, about how ugly Karina Kaboom is. And have you seen her teeth? And she looks like a witch. And blah, blah. Her skin is so horrible. Said something about her being a man. Uh, you know? Come on. All that kind of stuff. Like that's that came out of her mouth. This is supposed to be a professional whose job it is to make women feel beautiful. And then she's going to someone who had a negative opinion about her product initially. That's where the whole Karina Kaboom thing started, from my understanding, was Karina reviewed it, didn't give it a good review, and then there she is on camera with Manny MUA and some of these other YouTubers commenting on her. Okay, yeah, then Jen tried to claim, oh, things that she said were taken out of context, they cut off the Not video. True. She told Not me true. specifically, Karina Kaboom is ugly. She mentioned her teeth, all that sort of stuff. And now to you, really? she made it a point to say all that same sort of stuff. Was she also talking about- Everybody's not lying on her, Mango. All these people are not lying on Jennifer Jarr. You know, I think she's just completely unself-aware. Jennifer is the most unself-aware person I have ever met in my entire life. She's at church every single week, probably praying her sins away and hoping God will forgive her. But she's not a good person, and I sincerely don't think she knows that. What did she say? Because I know that you, um, when we spoke, you were telling me that she was saying like even some like derogatory, homophobic sort of stuff about me. Ah! Kind of take me through like, okay, my video comes out. What was she saying about me then? Was she kind of working with these other channels? Because oh in my opinion, what I've said, she's been talking to other drama channels to try to take me down. What was she telling you about that? Kind of take us through like how she reacted from my video. Oh my gosh, Mango. First of all, she stopped everything. She stopped working. She did everything in her power to try to shut you down. So she contacted every like vlogger that she could, beauty vlogger, all of her little friends or anybody who wasn't her friends. And she's like sending them like, um, I don't know, free makeup and, you know, all these things. And just so that they can all come against Mango T. Now listen, Mango, like this is something that could have just blew over had she just been quiet. What is she doing? Like news happens, and if you're just quiet and you shut up, it'll pass. And then Mango T will be talking about something else, like the newest yeah. juice, right? right? Or tea. There's always something going but on in YouTube. Yeah. You moved on, and she didn't. Like she told me two weeks ago or so that she was in court and that she um, subpoenaed some information. And I don't know, you probably can't have, I don't know how deep I can go into that or whatever, but she confirmed for me that. She did that. And also when she speaks about you, it's really not you in a derogatory way when it comes to your um, sexual preference. It's your husband she hates. His, I mean, I don't even want to repeat the stuff she says against him because of his sexuality. It has nothing to do with his sexuality. He is your lawyer working on your behalf. So you're probably not gonna like him, but what does that have to do with him being gay? You know, it is. I, I'm sorry, it's terrible. It is. And then she tries to pretend like she just loves gay guys and my gay friend here and, you know, try to pretend like so she can just have that support from that community and the beauty community. That's all it is, but it's not really who she is in, in real life. She has, a, I don't know if she has a problem with, with homosexuals or not. Obviously she does if she's saying these things against your husband. If she doesn't, then she absolutely shouldn't be saying it. She shouldn't be saying these derogatory things. Another thing in, uh, uh, that she refuses to do is have products specifically for women of color. Right. As a woman of color, I've come to her and I said, hey, I will work with you on this if you need any help um, at all to get something. Because, you know, I, I don't feel like there's really anything that I can use that represents me. I would love to be able to support your brand if you have colors that are for women of color. And she literally told me, I would never do that because black 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 makeup just doesn't sell. My men's makeup would sell before that. Or I'll just focus on old women and come out with an old woman. I'm like, do you realize how much black people spend on hair and makeup and other beauty products? We, our dollars are powerful. And I tried to explain this to her and she was still like, no. Like she, she loves black men, but she doesn't care for black women at all. 
And you think as a cosmetics company, you have to try to appeal to more than just who she is, maybe like a white woman. You have to appeal to all different types. You have to not just sell your makeup to one type of woman. You have to, if that is her goal to empower women, make them feel good and look good, why are you only having makeup for a certain type? And then you're gonna to try to go after men's makeup. Who are gonna be buying men's makeup? Possibly, or 99% in my opinion would be gay men. Yet she's yeah. willing to come for my husband in a derogatory way for him being gay or for being older than me or mm -hmm. whatever she probably goes on about. I'm sure that you probably got in an earful from her about me. And I think that, you know, like you said, she's primarily dating African-American men. Why isn't that she, she gets from, uh, what is the black, is it uh, black people? Black people meet. She goes on Black People Me, and you'll probably see her on there if you go on there. She doesn't hurry to take it off. And she puts an ad on there claim, talking about who she is and I, I, how much, what she does. And so then, of course, people are going to be attracted to that, you know, the, whatever type of people that will be attracted to someone with money. And then, like, Bible, like, she has, since I've known her in the last three years or so, she's, since she's been with my ex, she's been with a slew of Black men, like, I would say probably 14, wow. one, twice a month, just somebody new, right? It's just, that's what she does. And then when she- Is she buying them things though? Is that kind of like the way that she, put, like cars, like what? Yes. She just like splurging on these guys. She has black men on her payroll that don't even work. They're just on the payroll. They, I'm not gonna name any names, but he wants to get, he gets cars houses or whatever money and the men that she brings in her life they're driving her bentley they're driving her bmw that she's employing them to work for her if they're really even working she just there's one guy that i saw literally come up to her she had her book of paychecks out and he was like i need x amount of money for this job just write down keep it to him. i need twenty five thousand for this job i said i'll give it to him and so in my ex's case, when she got sick of him, she just threw him in the workhouse with all the other rejects in there. I swear to you, there's like 25 rejects in that warehouse over at Gerard Cosmetics. And she thinks that it's okay to demote someone just based on an intercompany romance gone wrong. Now, this is why they say, like, do not have workplace romance. Don't, too much there is just too, don't go there, you know? But she uses like her job to get these men to try to hopefully keep them around because they're on her payroll. And that's what I feel like is going on with that whole situation. I just think that, I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place. I can only really speak from my experience on this thing, but just like with the subpoena for the information, we're like, Jen, we're willing to comply with you. That's what my husband told her attorney. Like, we're willing to like do this outside of court. If you need certain information, let us oh, know my. and we'll get you the information. She wants to go to court, even though she lost. I did that. To what? Mango, I did that. I'm like, what are you doing? I have the money. I'll give you this. It's still June. Like, I'll give you the. No, no, no. She wants to go to court and she wants to hurt you. And I have three children. Do you know that? You know, come next week, if that judge grants an eviction or an all off a detainer, it'll make it impossible for myself and my children to get another place to live. She doesn't care. No, because I'm not behind them. She wants it on your record. She wants something poorly to reflect on your renting history. So then she's basically screwing you over from getting any other sort of place when you have children and you have other things that you have to take care of. And she wants to say, nope, I'm going to take you to court. We're going to battle this out and we're going to try to make you live in misery after she was initially trying to befriend you and play along with me. You have like the life of not luxury because you're not living in a nice place with brown water and whatever, but she wants to try to act like if you play my game and you're willing to come after your ex, which is also her ex, you yeah. go after him together because she has her, she needs to get that, you know, um, she needs to win this battle. She needs to get whatever revenge, whatever it is, right? So she's wanting you to play her game when you're not willing to play with her game because it's not true to you and it's not ethical or the right thing to do. Nah. Then she kicks you out of the place. And I think too, <laughs> it's sick because I had so many people, I, I had a very positive response to my video, but there was also a very negative response of all people who've, there was one guy and I saw his face on the Gerard Cosmetics website who wrote to me, you know what I mean? It's like people that were on her side that were writing to me and saying certain things. 
And even when I talked to Jen, I'm like, you know what? She told me, take the video down, because I had the initial video that I took down. I said, I'll tell both sides of the story, because she's telling me this very dark side of another story, but I knew something wasn't just quite adding up. And I said, you know what? I'll tell both sides of the story. Let people make their own opinion. But when she started getting all these people to come after me, all these drama channels to try to take my channel down, to uh, every single time I said the word Jen Gerard in my video, she flagged it. So there'd be like Shut 45 up. different, like, you know, like you can report a video. 45 She's checking for you things. every day, Vangam. And she supposed to be the CEO of a cosmetics company. Why does she spend so much time on a video that got 30,000 views? This isn't a video that went viral that the news, like 17 magazine reporting on it. This wasn't like it was a huge news story. This is like 20, 30,000 views. Yet she's taking no. it into like her daily mission when yes, she should be maybe developing the makeup line for people of color. No, she's Thank spending you. time on mango tea, right? She's spending right. time on Karina Kaboom years later. No, I thought about it too. I'm like, what are people gonna think, you know, when I'm interviewing Tisha about this sort of situation. I'm sure Jen's gonna go on the whole thing and like the Jen Gerard people coming for me, <laughs> rather people on Jen's side coming for me. Yeah. So it's like, how are people going to, you know, take, you know, your side of the story? So do you have anything to say to those people who are like, well, you know, maybe, you know, the reason she's speaking out all of a sudden is because of this drama that's going on. Like, what do you have to say to those people? that are gonna be leaving well, comments, for example? Well, first of all, I came to you. I saw you up. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Like, you don't know me from Adam. You don't know my information. I sought you out and I said, listen, I'm done with this. I'm not gonna let her get away with this anymore. I'm sick of looking in the shadows while she destroys people's lives. Um, and another thing, you know, I guess people could try to say, well, she's just trying to help her ex out in this situation. Jen knows that my ex and I, we don't even speak. I mean, he does what he needs to do financially for the children, and that's as far as it goes with he and I. So it wouldn't make any sense for me to, you know, try to come to on his side for any reason. But it just, I can't continue to allow, and I know better, when I know better, for her to do this. Now, the people that are going to come from Jordan's, uh, Jennifer's side are all people that are on her payroll. Even her, even her, the church that she goes to, the first lady of the church, the pastor's wife. She works for her. She's like the executive assistant in her business. So of course, she's gonna try to see, this is the lady from my church and even a lady from my church who's close to God's gonna say, she uses that stuff all the time. Every single person at her church is on her payroll. So you can't listen to anything they have to say. You know, they're all paid and they all do what she tells them to do. And if you're not, if they're not the ones being paid then she's gonna reach out to other people and somehow offer them some sort of benefit to be on her side. You know, but still, yet and still, every single last one of those individuals that she can bring um, to the table, I know all of them. You know, I've been to her church. They know me. I wouldn't just lie on her. I wouldn't lie on Jen. Jen is not who she portrays herself to be. Those people don't know that Jen's trying to evict me. And if I didn't come forward and say my side of the story, because she's always lying to the people around her to make her seem like the okay one. Well, I'm inviting her because of X, Y, and Z. They don't know I paid her $20,000. The people in her church, there are at least three of them that I know for sure. She pays their rent every single day. And in this city, that's expensive. Mm, I'm sure. That's expensive. Yeah. They don't know that I'm paying $2,000 a month to be here. They're probably wondering, hey, why isn't she giving her this option? I don't care to have that option. I work for everything I have. Jen's not doing me any favors. You know, I do appreciate her allowing me to move for free, but I would have been fine where I was had I known I was going to go through this garbage. You know what I mean? Because she recruited so, you to live at the place that you're at now. You were absolutely. saying like, oh, like I have this other place or whatever right and she kind of was like no 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 come here come into my place and you she had somebody too. already lined up for this place i didn't know that uh mango i didn't know that there was already somebody lined up for this place until one day her um uh her a personal house cleaner that she parades as a maintenance professional which she just isn't an electrician and a plumber and all this kind of stuff came to my house to fix try to fix one of the many things he can't ever fix and he brought a friend with him and that friend said, you know, I'm the one who was supposed to move in here. You see all this paint that's done, you know, I painted this place. He said, I've been trying to fix it up. She had, she recruited him to fix up the house and then told him that if he fixed it up, he and his four, four or so children can move in, who also live in the Lancaster area. 
I said, well, I didn't know that. Why did you do all of this work? And she allowed, she said, you can live here. And that's why you're trying to fix it up. And then she gives it to me. She says, I don't know. You know, I was upset about that. Now I get it. You know, so it wasn't like I was begging her to live here. Somebody was already going to be living here. Yeah, she was already having someone trying to come in. Yes. Oh, it's just all so much to take in, in a way. It's just, you know, like I was saying, like with like the backlash and stuff, it was just like a lot of people yeah. making like you're putting her life in danger and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, I'm reporting on a sexual harassment claim that was, you know, out there sort of thing. And, you know, there was no court stuff going on with your ex for like two years or anything like that she gets all these people to come and attack me and it's almost like gaslighting me in a way where i feel like am i crazy for putting this information out no. there's something wrong with me do you think that you know is her life in danger in this way like no. or do you, that's what i'm saying she didn't take home from her home let's just Let's just clear this up because I'm just so sick of her lies, Mango. Jen didn't move from her home because she thought she was in danger. Jen had a mansion out in Santa Clarita somewhere in this valley. I can't say when. I've been in the house. It was beautiful. And she was parading it as her own. She was renting from that home. She was renting that mansion. And she's like a lot of people in Valencia, Santa Clarita. They're like, she's posing. She's pretending. So um, the owner of that home decided that he wanted to sell the home. So then she had to move for that reason, okay? She ended up buying a home, another home. And she tried to play it off like um, my ex, she was so afraid, like you were saying, and she had to move because she was now in fear of her life. Because of you, Mango, that's why. <laughs> I would say that's not true. Uh, and my ex, is an, I haven't heard a peep out of him as it pertains to, you know, him, you know, trying to harm me or, you know, I don't know. He, he, I don't know if he turned a new leaf or not. I'm not in his life like that, but I haven't had any issues for two years straight, period. Things always come out of the bag about Gerard Cosmetics. And a lot of people write to me and they come out like, I want to speak out, but don't use my name. A lot of people are in fear of her, but they do have a lot to say of her other employees who work for Gerard Cosmetics. There are a lot of people on the inside that basically are fearful of any sort of revenge of Jen Gerard. So I just think it's very interesting that, you know, she somehow always is a victim in one way or another, but oh. it seems like everyone's kind of like, hey, like, no, we all have a story about Jen Gerard, you know? Yeah. She uses it almost like, in my opinion, like a defense thing or trying to turn people on her side. She gets these beauty bloggers and stuff like that. I just think that, you know, I did debate like, you know, even back then, like, am I going to make another video about Jen after I talked to her on the phone and stuff? But her stories change and change and change and change. And, like, there's okay. something that's not quite right here about the founder of Gerard Cosmetics. She's always involved in some type of drama. She's always involved with drama channels and YouTubers. And she goes on private on Twitter and she says stuff. She's, even like a, one time, I w it was like weeks or m probably months afterwards, she was like liking all these posts against me and then I tweet about her, then I'm the bad guy because, oh my God, Mango T wrote about me, yet she's the one liking all these comments about me. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, I, I feel know. like she, she plays behind the scenes a lot. Do you agree with that? Like, even like, oh, she me or, like she's always behind the scenes scheming ways absolutely. to kind of like ruin people. It's part of her work day. Obviously, it shouldn't be, but it is literally part of her work day to figure out how she's going to get back at you and how she's going to get back at my ex. I don't know what else she has going on over there, but one thing we can say, you know, I always like to try to say something good mm. about somebody. And one good thing I can say is that Jen did work really hard to, you know, you know, build this company and be successful. And she did that. She worked hard, she, she's now, she's successful in business and whatever. But the sad part is, is that that integrity and that character wasn't there in the beginning. And had it been there in the beginning, I think she would be so much farther in business right now and let all the drama that is supposed to be happening. People are talking about you and it's your job to sell things. That's good. I mean, some people say that, like if, you, if, if your name is not in somebody's mouth, then you're not relevant. Am I wrong or right? No, exactly. So just just let people talk or whatever and just move on. But she's such a messy person. And I don't know what's going on inside of her, but it's obviously something negative. And if she could have gotten that fixed on the inside first, 
before she got to where she is, she wouldn't be in this situation now because it is affecting her business. And she has confided in me about that. You know, this is affecting my business. Um, my, my sales are as low as they ever been and blah, 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 blah. So that should be a cue that you need to change something. When she was telling that she was that after like recent drama, like after I was talking about her, or was this over the course of a year? Like how long has this been when her sales declined? She told me that it had 100% to do with my ex and with you. Her taking time out of her business to address all these things and putting together all these plans. And you know what? Another person extremely close to her, Mango, confirmed this for me that she took so much time away from her business to do this petty little vindictive garbage that she put these little kids in charge of her business that she worked so hard for while she put all her energy on you and the rest. And now her business is suffering. And now she's having to lay people off, you know? But it didn't stop her from living the life she lived. She lives a life of luxury. If you follow her on Facebook or Facebook or any other social media, Instagram, you'll see that it's not stopping her. I, I don't know what I can believe that comes out of her. Yeah. Exactly. You know? And, you know, I think that Jen took it as, like, I had some personal vendetta against her or something like that. When I first made my video, I didn't know much about Gerard Cosmetics. All I knew was about the Karina Kaboom drama and stuff that was going on with that. So when I get this email with the complaint in it, again, uh -huh. this email came from, say it was, like, Michigan attorney. Or it came from the name of an attorney saying, hey, like, check out, like, maybe doing a story about this. You know, there's drama with the owner of Gerard Cosmetics. And I reported on the facts of what was being reported about because of the Me Too movement and people coming up and stepping forward. I thought it was like almost my responsibility. I thought that I was helping someone tell their story to come forward. Granted, I didn't know that with your ex and stuff, there was this whole romance and there was all this drama and she's yeah. claiming that he's coming for her and all this different stuff going on. She's on the phone with me showing me text messages, but then she accidentally shows me a text message that makes me be like, hmm, there's actually probably a romance because she claimed, oh no, we didn't sleep together. Then I see the text message that I never said F to you. She told you this? Initially, initially she claimed that it was just one of her employees and all this sort of stuff. I didn't know that this was a romance. I got it out of her later on and as I was piecing the puzzle together, I find out that there was all this other stuff going on. That's why a lot of people are like, oh, this is a romance that was gone south and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, you know what? I put it out there. And this is for all those people out there watching. You know, I put the story out there. I retracted the story to tell both sides. And then I tried to move forward. I said, you know what? I'm done talking about Gerard Cosmetics. This has kind of been the theme for the last couple of months. I don't want to deal with Jen. She's toxic. She's negative. You know, yes. she's bad to deal with. And then I get served in a bar with the subpoena for information when we were willing to provide this information to her from the beginning if there's anything that she really possibly needs takes us to court she loses but then even after we after she loses in court we say to her we're willing to turn over the information that you need to you just give us an email or a call and we'll do that for you wow but, i didn't know that part yeah. i didn't know that you did that that's not what she's telling me Right. She's telling she's telling the people, just so you can hear the other side, that you're not giving up the email at all from my ex. I and we're gonna keep it. I showed the email in the video. I just put like a little black box over, if she even watched my video, a little black box over like the email address, just like I would do for anyone. If she wants that email, it's not that big of a deal. It's a dead email. It doesn't go anywhere now. She can't do anything to find it's not like it came from an official like <laughs> source email yeah. a disposable email if she wants it she can have it i don't know what she wants to do with it i don't have a personal thing about jen gerard when you reached out to me and contacted me and stuff that's the only reason i was willing to come up and let you have a platform to say your side of this different story and and be able to speak out and get other people to hear your side because you know so many people are hearing jen's side and i think that it's a really yes. twisted perspective on this whole situation and then we can lay it to rest you know what i mean and move forward with our yeah. life. i want you to move forward with your life i'm sorry you have to go through all this drama with her in your place and having to deal with you know your kids have to be affected by this sort of thing granted you know i'm in a whole different 
thing with her over me putting this all out there on the internet. I'm under attack in a different way. She's coming from my job as a YouTuber whose job is to wow. report on And she told me that, just so you know. Her whole goal is to make it so that you can't earn a living online anymore. That's her whole goal. You'll be lucky if you'll ever be able to show his face on YouTube again. That's how she does. That's what she wants for you. And that's why she con she continues to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and court and won't let it go because she's hoping that in the end she wins and you can't be on YouTube anymore. And that's the only reason why she continues. She shouldn't have started by dating. Uh, you can't blame her for this, but you know she started an inner company romance with your ex and uh -huh. sort of stuff. And with her subordinate, right? Yeah. You know, and, and she's you know um, there was the complaint of the sexual harassment, all that sort of stuff. And then it all kind of snowballed from there. I mean, if anything, Jen can learn a lesson. Don't date people in your company. Don't try to buy guys and stuff like that. It's just, <laughs> I don't know. I just have so many feelings about it. <laughs> I have to admit, Mango, there, she gets some very beautiful men. Money buys beautiful men. Money can buy you anything <laughs> nowadays. But, you know, I really don't have a vendetta personally against her. You know, I feel bad for what she's put you through and, you know, a lot of the other drama and stuff like that. You know, again, we aren't there to see the text messages between your ex and her, like other stuff that's gone on behind closed doors. I've seen what she's shown me. I'm sure there is a lot of stuff. I'm not taking your side. I'm not taking his side. I'm not taking anyone's side. I'm giving you a platform to speak. I'm sure that they have their own things that are crazy. She's had to go to court and all this sort of stuff. But the way she deals with everything is the issue. That's what the closing part of this video is. How Jen deals with people. How she treats them. Here you are, a mother with kids, and look at how she's treating you. I'm telling a story about you know what someone's coming forward to me as part of a me too movement and she comes and she puts me under attack for reporting on a story like a journalist essentially that's what i'm doing yeah. i'm reporting on a yeah. story and she's trying Can to I shut my something? voice up she's trying to shut me up i want to say something about how you did that piece i thought you did a phenomenal job you did a fair phenomenal job it was almost like how does he know all this information like you got it so right on the head even with her when you're like i'm not so sure about what she's saying here because of this you know because of what he's presenting and it was dead on and she just didn't like that part about being exposed so kudos to you for doing an amazing job at presenting both sides of the story. But and you know what? To you too, though. Kudos to you for coming forward and speaking up, because as we know, this is a person who is willing to, you know, try to sue, trying to take people to court and trying to drive them into drama, ruin people's reputation. For you to be brave enough to come forward to talk to me and come on camera to do an interview, putting your own self out there and saying, hey, this is my story up for thousands, tens of thousands of people, however many people are going to watch this video to put your story out there. You know, it's very important for you to, be able to do that. So, you know, kudos to you for, you know, having the courage to come and speak your truth about all of this. And, you know, I'll we'll do a follow up after or we'll check in with you again and try to, you know, do a follow up piece on this sort of thing. Maybe we can meet up in person and do a follow up another week or two. And you can kind of recap what happened at the end of all this sort of saga and what is to come of this video. But. You know, um, if you have any closing things you want to say, if not, then we'll leave it at that. But you let us know. I mean, just really briefly, I want to say to Jen that you may not want to lie about me and the truth of what I'm saying, because I do have receipts. Slander, you can't say because it's the truth. They're facts and I can back them up. So you don't want me to have to come back to Mango Tea and produce <laughs> the hard copy facts for what it is I'm saying, because the truth is I am watering it down because I don't want her to go, you know, completely broke, hopefully. But you know what? If it comes to that, then I absolutely will, because I'm going to defend what I'm trying to do is this. You're not going to do this to anybody else. I know that if she's doing it to me, this is her practice, because I was sincere in my relationship with Jennifer Gerard and the people who are going to come for me in her camp, you know this. You knew my, you know my character. You've met me. You know I wouldn't throw this woman under the bus. Any sort of thing that she's going to say that I'm doing, trying to extort her or trying to get money, that's not true. I have my receipts for paying my rent every single month in this hellhole that I'm living in now. You know, and anything that I, that I told you, she said about your husband, about you about my ex, 
about our interaction amongst us, my ex, myself, and Jennifer, all verifiable. And I don't want to have to go any farther with it. So she may want to just back off and understand that the accumulation of everything you've been doing to people thus far, boom, is blowing up. And you need to accept that and hopefully reflect on being able to look at yourself and say, I need to make some changes. That's what needs to happen. I hope that this is the lesson for Jennifer moving forward. Honestly, though, I'm happy that you decided to speak up and do all of this. And I think that there is a message that it doesn't have to be a negative thing to Jen at the end. Just like you said, you know, she just needs to learn from all of this and she can turn things around if she wants to and make things right with people. But if she wants to attack and bully and come for people, it just comes right back for you in a way, you know, so. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. One last thing, yeah, yeah. if you will. Yeah, go for okay. it. Okay. So, you know, I also want to say something for the people around her, like, for example, and I can't say any names, the housekeeper that she parades around as a maintenance professional, an electrician. You know what? I can come for him because at the end of the day, he's posing as something he shouldn't be. And she sends him to my home and to, and to do silly stuff like, you know, hey, the locks aren't working and try to use him in his profession, which he's not licensed to do, to debunk what I'm saying so that she, I can keep living like a, you know, living in this environment. And, or she'll have him come, well, you don't have an, an issue with your electrical outlets. My son has already been shocked and a professional has already come out, but she'll send him to, to, send, to, to plug his, his uh, charger in from his phone and say, I have to say, uh, housekeeper, what are you doing? You know, you're putting your business in jeopardy for someone who's not going to have your back. She's just using you for her own personal advancement. And when I come for you, for posing to be something that you're not, now you're going to lose your license and your ability to work. Same thing with the owner of the leasing company. She is so intelligent. Her and her husband out here in Santa Clarita, they are everything. Why would you risk your business when you told me in the beginning, you cannot lie, like I said, all of my phone calls are recorded. And I keep everything, I let everybody know that. So I keep the interaction um, amongst myself and all the people at that, at that um, management company. Why would you risk your business? Well, the only thing Jen's gonna do in the end is to put it all on you. That's why she even put you there. She's gonna say, it wasn't my fault. I don't want people to hear this because she's gonna come for this. Yeah. It wasn't my fault. I hired a maintenance company and it's their job to make sure that everything in her house was fixed. And on their behalf, Jen, which, okay, I can say Jen. Jen would shut them down and tell them, don't do anything. Send it to me, and I'm going to send my own people out to take care of the issues and render them useless. But yet they kept taking her money every month. So now they put them in a position, themselves in a position that when I go to court, I'm coming for you. You should have accepted this opportunity for her from her when you know this is subpar and it's not what you do and it's not how you do business and that's what you told me. So I just want the people even around her accepting her money. You know, this ship is sinking. You may not want to continue to put your business and your livelihood and what you use to take care of your family on the line for somebody like Jennifer Gerard. I, I just have a feeling it's just not going to work out well for her to do this. It may be putting these other people at risk and all this stuff, but, you know, it's a harsh reality for her at the end, I think, at the end of all of this. All right. Thank you so much, right. Mangum. Thank you, Tisha. Thanks so much for coming on. Hey, guys, so I just finished interviewing Tisha, and I just wanted to leave my final thoughts here. I'm really happy that she is brave enough to come forward and tell her story here in Mango Tea. So please don't leave any hate comments or anything down below. You know, it takes a lot of courage to be able to speak out against someone who has a lot of power in that way. So I really do give props to Tisha for speaking out against Jen and Gerard Cosmetics. And again, if you guys would like, I will keep in touch with Tisha to give you guys an update on what's going on with her eviction and everything that's going on and again i don't have any ill will towards jen gerard or gerard cosmetics i just wanted to give tisha a platform to be able to speak out and tell her story to others who have kept up with my videos on gerard cosmetics i really just want to leave it at that guys i've refrained from saying other things about you know the legal proceedings and other things that have been going on behind the scenes with jen on my channel i really do feel like she's a toxic personality in my opinion and i don't want to deal with that but when tisha um, wrote to me wanting to come forward and tell her story and just hearing some of the things that she's had to go through whether it's like lying and you know with her kids and being evicted and all this sort of stuff i'm like you know what i think that it really truly shows 
the character of Jen Gerard, so I really wanted to be able to tell her story on my channel today. So I just want to keep you guys posted on that and let you know that I have more videos coming your way. Make sure to leave a comment down below, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, turn that little bell icon so you stay notified on all the latest tea. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video.